Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel Go Dynamic IT. If you are a beginner or intermediate user searching for a network backup solution using open source software, your search ends here. In this video, we will guide you through setting up a shared folder on a Windows machine and running a backup using duplicate. If you are already familiar with the concept folder share, feel free to skip ahead to the network backup configuration. Otherwise, stay with us to learn the full process. Let us understand why we need the network back. So assume that you are a chartered accountant or you are a content creator or you are a someone like a professional who is having a small office like 10 12 15 user of office and generally what happens in the small offices you say you bring one server here and then in the server you create an active directory and then you create a share folder and then you install some uh, application on this machine and you access it through the network let's say this is your switch and from the switch you have a different machines connected here this is how this the typical network LAN network or any office network looks like it, it could be that you have a Wi-Fi and few laptops users or desktop users are connected with the Wi-Fi also so this is how the typical scenario is. why you build a central this is called a central server so why you build a central server because you want all the data everything saved or centralized on your on this server so in this scenario what we will do is since we have a software duplicate and we need the backup solution so your data all your important data is here and you won't take the backup of your data so that anything happen with this system you have a backup and then you can once you build the system you can restore it back to the system right so what we will do is in this scenario you install this duplicate on all the system and then you share a folder from here yes one folder called data backup folder it could be anything and then you dump all the data here through this network so this is how you centrally you take the backup of your data to them maybe this is the external drive you have connected to this machine and all your backup is going to here so this is called a central backup so this is a very useful for a small offices or maybe the medium sized offices also when you have a uh, one server and, and assume that this server is a configured with a RAID also you must be aware of the RAID concept so RAID is nothing but a combining a multiple disk and then create a one logical volume so that anything happened with the disk disk your volume should not be get affected so there are like the RAID is a different concept RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 all the other things are there we are not going to discuss here so let's discuss about this data backup centrally through the duplicate on the central server so now so you understand the concept so let's go ahead and try to configure it so what we will do in this video just to shake up this video a few of you may want to know that how to share the the drive on the server it could be your windows 10 windows server windows 2008 windows 2012 whatever server you have and then how you share your data how you share your folder to the these machines uh, let's try to configure that on our windows machine and then we create a backup on it network backup on it so let's go ahead and let me delete this this then come back so let's go and create a share folder first then we'll come back to the this machine okay you can see here this is my windows machine here and i have a dedicated drive here this is my dedicated drive e drive and i want to save all my lan data to this drive e drive so what we'll do is we'll create a folder first here so it can say we can name it like backup data once we create a backup data you have to right click on it go to the properties click on the sharing and a share and it said to whom you want to share it so if you have a user select the user from here or if you do not have a user you can create a user from here so i would like to share with uh, the user so this user is already there you can create and save it and create as a owner so let's say if you have a let's quickly create one user not not like that you go to the manage right click on this computer manage and you have to go to user and users and here you create a folder quickly here you create a, a user called backup and password one change the password password never x now you can see this backup user is created so when i come back to this one you can see backup user had comes and now it's what permission you want to give you want to give the read or write permission so definitely i want to give the read and write so you can he can save the data here. so you can see i have a two users and depending on what you can have a, you can add a multiple users here and you can set the read and write permission on it so this is a complete uh, different chapter your data folder security and all if you want to know that how to set up this data security put me in the comment box i will create a separate video for it. so as of now let's click on the share the sharing you can see folder is shared done so for you it may ask you that um, do you want to share with your uh, with a public network or the private network so you always select as a private network not the public network when the pop-ups come so now you can see this folder is shared we have to get this ip address from this machine md i config and you can see this is my ip address what is the ip address 168 86.183 okay let's go back to our client machine here let's open this first we have to check the reachability open the command prompt here cmd let's paste this uh, 
IP and ping it. So this is a reachable. So in case it's not reachable, you have to go and disable the firewall or allow this ping through the firewall right this is the remedy now it's time to check whether the folder sharing is happening or not so what you do is you have to go to the run and add this ip address here and click on the ok let's say you can see you have a backup data folder accessible here so this should be must so it's time to open this software duplicate okay so we have a web interface here and it's asking for password if you want to know how to set up the password in the last video we have set up the password you can go ahead and watch that video log in here now i have logged into the this machine so we have to create a new backup here so what we have to do is we have to go and create a add backup he said you want to create a new backup yes I want to create a new backup next and it says you have to give the name of that backup what you want so let's say like network backup I have a given a name called network backup and description uh, on the server or whatever it is you can give the server and you can put the IP address also if you wish like which server you want description is very important it will help you later on and it says that what type of encryption you want yes I definitely want to encrypt put the encryption here. okay so I have given the password here you say the strength is useless I know I know because I have given the very weak password just for demo purpose for you but you you can give the strong password and you can click on the next this is important this encryption is important i've already discussed about the encryption in one of my video uh, duplicate video you can go ahead and watch in the playlist click on the next and now it says that local drive or folder where you want to save this the drive so if you go with this menu we have to select your local drive on this but now our requirement is to go ahead and select the network drive so you have to see manually type the path and you have here you need the path i said that first you browse this network right we have already done it now this is our network drive copy paste here the path you can see this is our network path and what is the username so we have created a user what is the user b a c k u backup and this is the password we have created and once you set up the username and password you have to test the connect so let's say it's testing the connection okay so you can see here this says connection work once once you say this message uh, it means that now you learn how to share the folder so this is okay now it says that additional information you can go ahead and pick up the information additional information what do you want create here and click on the next and it says that what would your source data source data means which which data you want to back up so i have a data on my desktop let's go to our desktop and select this important files i have selected the important files here click on the next and it says that when you want to take the backup so this is going to be the incremental backup when you select this automatically run the backup it would be the incremental one and depends on like there is an option here days hours week month years you can go ahead and select it from here or you can say what how many times you want to run this backup run again every one day or two days depends like and you change the, your timing from here as so for me i just disable this one automatic backup i just wanted to create a manual one just for testing purpose. now click on the next i said general purpose what a volume size you want let's say uh, 50 megabytes should be fine keep all the backups or you can select the smart backup re retentions i would select the smart backup retention so that it will keep this is the uh, useful when you don't know the what option to be selected if you keep all the backups it will take you lots of space and do you don't want the backup like one year or two year or three year back data backup right because if you're not required the backup backup for one year you i'm sure that you would not require the further also so it's always better to keep the smart backup so that you can see this is a very good information so it will delete the data automatically over the time it says that first it will it will remain the data for seven days then four weeks and then 12 months so for me for my purpose if i have to run the backup this is would be the good option and then you have an advanced option here advanced option like if you want to select either of them you can go ahead and do that you can send email and other operations are there so once a message once your backup is completed you can go ahead and this will send the email to you these are the couple of options you can go ahead and do that and it says that you give in the warning you have selected a weak passphrase so that's okay say that consider changing the password i know that i've given the weak password so use the weak pass as so now you can see it says network backup shall we go ahead and take the backup say yes or no in the comments okay let's take you can see this verifying the backend data this is the 30 18 file and 32 mb and this is says that's completed now now let's go back to our drive to other system we are on on our uh, server system and you can see we have all the data on the network drive how easy it is to take the backup right you can go ahead and configure it now can we do one thing can we just go ahead and try to delete the data and try to restore it from the network so what we will do is let's uh, delete this important file from here so what i will do is let's shift and delete and this file is got deleted now go back to our duplicate web interface and then we have to go to the restore here and from where you want to restore it 
So you, you have an option where you can direct restore it from the backup if you know that where your backup is or you can go with your backup schedule. So this, this is our backup schedule. Let's click on next. It said fetching the data. It said that which data you want to restore. Let's say if you have run the backup over time, it will show you that which date, which time you want to restore it. Now, let's say you want to restore like four, three, four days back. You select the, this date from here and timing from here and they go ahead and restore it. But before restoring, it will show you this data that what you want to restore. You may want to restore only six single file or you want to restore the complete folder this important file folder you can see this is the important file folder you want to restore everything from this folder or just one file i mean it depends on your requirement i would like to restore all my files which were there in the important file so click on the continue and it says where you want to restore it you want to restore it to the original location or you have to specify like which which location you want to restore, or you have to give the folder path and he say that how you want to handle the existing file something got deleted right like four days back other data are there already there in that particular folder so how you want to do whether you want to overwrite it or save the different version with the timestamp and the file name when you have a situation there that you want to save the file with the existing one you go ahead and select this one timestamp in file name for my case i'll just create a override because i just want all the data to be my on my desktop from where i have deleted my data so let's go ahead and restore it it said the starting backup your file folders are, wow you can see how is it, easy it is now when we go back to this important folder all my file folder everything is there isn't it the amazing thing and the best part of this software is it's a free and open source go ahead and take the backup of your all your client data and do let me know if you have any questions query or any feedback related to this video in the comment box thank you very much for watching my video